Hi, everybody. Happy Friday. We are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer to talk about the markets and bank earnings. Jim, let's start with Wells Fargo. You know, people are, are just saying, we don't care. Uh, I did a piece last night uh, about the bank stocks and saying it's going to be really hard to understand the numbers. Uh, but you need to know that interest rates are going higher. Uh, net interest margin is going to go up. Uh, the loans could increase because of the uh, change in the tax code. Uh, their earnings are going to go up, uh, bottom line earnings, because of the change in the tax code. Uh, and that's enough. Um, these are being viewed as trough quarters, literally trough quarters, uh, versus what's about to occur. And uh, I am surprised that Wells is up. It was not a good quarter. They had very bad efficiency issues. People are going to say that's going to go behind them. I'm surprised that given how bad fixed income trading was for JP Morgan, much worse than we thought, that people are overlooking that. Now, do I like Wells here It's 62, 63? No. Travel Trust bought JP Morgan. Now it looks to be an advantageous price. Uh, any weakness, JP Morgan, because I don't think the analysts can do anything other than raise numbers and you want to buy it. So is this the year for the banks? Last year was good for the banks. Um, this year can be good again because even after all of this, after the tax reform, they're selling at 13 times earnings. Um, and that makes them a very compelling group. The only groups that are really beneath them in terms of price earnings multiple uh, are the auto companies, which are you know, hobbled, hobbled by the structural change in the industry, and then the airlines, which are around nine, ten times earnings. So you're really dealing with a very low price earnings multiple group in a market that's about to sell 26,000. So it's a magnet for, for capital. Yeah, well, and we hear about how bank earnings kind of set the tone for the rest of the earnings season. They do, and the reason they do is because you can only imagine that the world revolves around finance, and if finance is booming, that means that there's going to be, that's just a reflection on how strong the economy really is. And if the economy is really strong, the Fed can raise rates, and that's going to just feed into the net interest margin, which is now going up, JP Morgan, big net interest margin. So there's a lot to like going forward. Obviously, it, you would love to them, you would absolutely love them to say, okay, look, here's the deal. Absolutely, here's the deal. Uh, you want very much to, uh, we're going to raise dividend big, buy back stock big, but they can't because that needs the Fed's approval. And they don't want to be in front of Jay Powell saying whatever they uh, can to be able to make it so that you buy their stock, you buy their stock ahead of when Jay takes office. So they're being prudent about that, and I really think that's good. Okay, Jim. Moving on, IBM CFO Martin Schroeder, who you you've had on yes. air, he's moving off that role. Yeah. Now it's important for people to recognize when the news came out. A lot of people told me, "Hey, your guy uh, Martin's in trouble." Um, yeah, he got demoted. It's just the opposite. He's been in finance. Nobody who runs finance is going to be able to take over a company that's driven by engineering and sales. He will move over to the head of sales. Who had that job uh, many years ago it was Ginny Rometty. That's a natural switch. So Martin is going to be, is he going to be groomed? Is he being groomed? I think yes, but Ginny's not going anywhere. I think the quarter is going to be excellent. Excellent. And I've been behind IBM ever since I knew that the mainframe was going to come back uh, in Q4 and that the stock was really going down because everyone was scurrying away from it because Warren Buffett was abandoning it. So I feel very good about it. And they report earnings uh, next Thursday. Yeah, and I think the quarter's going to reflect the mainframe. I hope Martin's still running the quarter he, uh, call. He, Martin does a great conference call. Uh, he's total stand-up. Meanwhile, Jim, J.P. Morgan and RBC upgrading Kohl's. What did you think well, of that? Look, I think this is really important. I did a piece uh, yesterday for Real Money saying not only is Kohl's cheap, this Matthew Boss upgrading it. Now, it is up 50% from the trough. But I also thought that Nordstrom should use this moment, and I said it last night and I wrote about it, should use this moment to resume the talks to go private. And within the last few minutes, they have. So that's and, very positive. And just on calls, you had the CEO on Mad Money this week. It was interesting to see him praise Amazon. Yep. Well, they're good partners, and uh, people don't seem to realize that. And one of the reasons they're really good partners and they're doing a trial is because they're strip malls. So it really makes it easy to buy online and pick up in store. And they, they want to partner with a lot of other companies. I continue to think that Macy's is going to begin to partner with other companies, maybe turning um, the Herald Square store into what I regard as being like Cotavet which is an amazing place in Berlin, where each floor is a little bit different. And I think it could happen to Macy's. I continue to like that stock. I like Nordstrom based on the idea that they, sh they can and should go private. I think retail is very good here. All right, Jim, who do you have coming up tonight on Mad Money? I have uh, Alder Bio. Alder is all about, I got involved in this stock when it's 10, 12 and saying, look, I was too early, but I think it's going to work. 
uh, anybody who has migraines are big and they have a migraine drug and it's really important. Allergan is a migraine drug too, but as you know, I'm keeping Allergan on a tight leash. As I said uh, in our in our monthly cop school, which was the best attended in the year, thank you very much, uh, club members, everybody should join it. And then I have an alpha called Faraday, which is a, um, it, it's kind of the new world. Uh, it's a experiential clothing company, it's private. One guy came from Ralph Lauren, two brothers, twins. The other guy came from finance. Uh, it's one to watch because I think they've got a very good business model, which is lifetime guarantee on close. Huh, all right, that's tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern on Med Money. And Jim, before we go, a big weekend for the Eagles. Yeah, no, I mean, the Eagles are underdog by the equivalent of a, a touchdown. Uh, which is rather remarkable because you should be getting four, uh, having to give Atlanta four. But let's forget about the line for a second. There's a very good video, uh, if you share my enthusiasm for the team, uh, that is on the Eagles website. Um, this is a team that has now gotten motivated by the line. Now, what do the, what do the Falcons have? They have Julio who is, with Antonio not doing that well, maybe a guy who just simply can't be covered. And in the last four weeks, their defense got very, very stiff. So you, uh, you have Matt Ryan, you have a team playing uh, over its head in order to get back into the Super Bowl to win this time after the embarrassment against a very lunch pail team that obviously lost its MVP quarterback and has a quarterback that played well, Nick Foles, against the Giants. He played well against the Rams and then has been horrendous. Uh, the best fourth, the best third down conversion, now the worst third down conversion. So it's going to have to be the defense that steps up and what they're going to have to do is open the game with passes to Nelson Aguilar and to Alshon Jeffrey not to anybody else, including Ertz, as much as I love him, but certainly not to Torrey Smith. Get that, uh, get the jam up in the box in order to be able to make it so that they can then do run, and then just give the ball to Ajahi. All right, There's the game plan that I have. I've shared that with management. <laughs> we wish you luck this Thank weekend. You. Jim and I are going to continue the conversation on ActionAlertsPlus.com. More stocks to talk about. We hope you join us.